This is EDU 6323. Technology is a medium for learning. Welcome to what I think will be a fun and powerful course. I'm your instructor, Dr. Brett Watwood. You can call me Brett, Dr. Watwood, Professor, Dr. W. I don't get too hung up on titles. You probably hear that hawk in the background. I'm here on my back deck in Central Virginia. That's what I love about teaching online. I can be here, you can be wherever you are. With the coronavirus and recent protests due to the death of George Floyd, an exploration of how digital technology can enhance learning is a timely subject. I look forward to getting to know each of you. You each are best suited to exploring and figuring out how digital tech could enhance your classroom or training environment. And in sharing that with the rest of us, we all gain. So I'll be learning with you as all of us learn together. As I said, I'm Brett Watwood. I'm also at B. Watwood at Twitter. I have an email address at Northeastern. I blog. I'm on LinkedIn and Facebook. I'm all over the web. I have a digital identity, as do each of you. Part of what we will address in this course is how all of us have some form of digital identity. And in this modern era, when you think about technology for learning, nine times out of 10, it has some implication with the web. So the focus of this course will be on using the web for learning. Welcome to the internet. Now let me spend a little bit of time just going over the course itself. The outcomes are really to spend some time exploring, to look at lots and lots of processes in the web and how they might be used for learning. As part of that, we will be exploring the ethical use and getting you to assess the value within your own specific educational or training needs. And we'll collaboratively do this. We will learn from each other. In some ways, this emulates exactly what we're talking about, using the web for learning. There are interesting questions posed when you examine the web for learning. What does the research say? Can tech be used to further cognition or motivation? Can tech enhance learning design? We will explore all of these as the course unfolds. And we cannot escape the real world. As we explore facets of ed tech, we will also examine what is happening in real time and what that might mean for our class. We are going to be using Michelle Miller's book, Minds Online. Online learning is a part of almost every educational facet today, whether you're talking face-to-face -face classes or hybrid classes or online classes. K-12, higher education, or corporate training. And so I think aspects of this book are good to underlay what we're going to look at. Michelle looks at things like attention, memory, thinking, motivation, and how some of that plays into multimedia. All that will be aspects of what we look at. And each week, as we look at different processes for learning, we'll be using Michelle's book as a kind of underpinning for that. So if you look at the course flow, we're going to start out with learning in a networked world. And then we have about six weeks of very specific aspects of learning using web technology, like blogging, searching, tagging, collaborating, screencasting, polling, and ending with virtual and augmented reality. But you'll notice behind this, they have a kind of big circle with attention, memory, thinking, and multimedia. These are aspects of Michelle Miller's book that will pull into these areas of interest. And in the last week, we'll look at steps we should use to move forward. This is the first term in which this course is being offered using our new learning management system, Canvas. I have taught in Canvas for about four years, and I really like it. So I hope that you will as well. We'll also be stepping outside of Canvas. Each week, we'll be using Twitter as a kind of tweet up. And I think that'll be a lot of fun. We'll, we will use Digo over a three-week period, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. And I'm also going to re recommend that you use either TweetDeck or Hootsuite to pull your hashtag EDU6323 tweets together. I'll show you that in a minute. But this is an important tool that can be used to manage things on the web. We will not be using Facebook or Instagram. I used to have a closed Facebook group in, in, as part of this course, 
but I stopped using that platform due to the scandal in 2018 regarding data mining. I no longer think I can morally ask you to set up a Facebook account or accounts in platforms owned by Facebook, like Instagram. So let's look at some course tools. As I noted, we'll be using Twitter during this course, and TweetDeck or Hootsuite make managing tweets much easier. If you've not seen TweetDeck before, this is what it looks like. This happens to be my, one, my particular one. Here are my home tweets of people that I'm following, and anytime anyone sends me a tweet, like Sarah Kirk did here, they show up under notifications. And then I follow hashtags, like EDU6323, or EdTech, or the course I just completed, EDU 6333, which makes it very easy to spot tweets someone has sent to the class because any tweet includes the hashtag. It doesn't matter whether it's uppercase or lowercase, it still comes through. Deco is a social bookmarking tool. I've been using it for a decade now and have about 7,000 websites organized by tags, like social media or tools or e-learning or others you see under the add button. When you bookmark a website, as I did with Nicholas Carr's article, Is Google Making Us Stupid? I can put in a number of tags to save it, which helps me remember where it is, and also share it to our class group. We'll be using Digo over about a three week period to collaboratively collect resources around different topics like attention, memory, thinking, and share them with each other and you will be using these shared articles in one of your paper. So a mix of web tools inside and outside of Canvas, and there will be other tools we look at as we specifically check out technologies for learning. Some things to do this first week besides watch this video, you need to set up accounts if you, if you do not already have them in Twitter, either Hootsuite or TweetDeck, not both, and Digo. You will find instructions and links for these under the pre-course setup in the Start Here module in Canvas. Sometimes it's a good idea to set up a dummy email account just to use for setting up these accounts so that down the road you don't get spammed. And look for the survey so I can learn more about you. If you've not had me before, you will recognize rather quickly that I use a process called PIA to organize my weekly lessons. PIA stands for Preparation, Interactions, Assessment, and this comes out of St. Leo University down in Florida. I've been doing this for about a decade, and I really like the idea of organizing my online class. You will see when I show you the class that I've organized each week under these three areas. Preparation is basically setting the stage, getting you to think about what's coming up, what are the learning objectives, and what are the specific things you have to do each week with their due dates. The interactions is where you do things. Connect, you interact with content, you interact with each other, you interact with me. And evaluation is basically how you're graded. So it's pretty straightforward, and this is a nice organization for a class. So let's look at that class and how it looks in Canvas. It's an eight-week class, so we'll, we'll be moving at warp speed. So here we are in the dashboard in Canvas, and this course you can pretty quickly see it's got this little emblem here. If we click into the course, you'll land on the home page. I will probably, after the first couple of weeks, have us land in modules because that's just easier. But to start with, you land here. This has this video and contact information for me. But the modules are where things happen. And so in the Modules, the first module is start here. It's got information about the course flow, the syllabus, the textbooks, the pre-course setup that I talked about earlier. For instance, setting up your Twitter accounts, Hootsuite or TweetDeck, setting up Digo. And then each module, as you'll see, is set up under preparation, interactions, and assessment. So for instance, week three, We'll just take a look at that one. So in week three, we're going to be looking at search. And so I give a little information about to set the stage about that. An overview of the module. One of the things we'll be doing that week is 
looking at a website, but searching for it through Google, Bing, uh, DuckDuckGo, and the Chinese website Baidu. You'll also be using Digo that particular week to start collecting some resources. Here's the learning objectives for that week, and here's your task list. It tells you specifically that you have to do certain things by Thursday, you have to post by Friday, and you have a paper that's due on Sunday. So that's pretty straightforward. I click the next button. This just simply talks about interactions, interactions with content, each other, me, yourself. So the first interactions, and a lot of these are very, very short, so don't let the number throw you off, but here are some links to some different readings, uh, a couple of videos to watch, some information I put together about smarter searches, some information about using Digo, and then your first assignment is every and there'll be one of these every week tweeting so then this particular week we're going to uh, share your thoughts about Carr and Thompson's article and whether you agree or disagree with it the discussions each week this is these are the kinds of things that you'll be doing in discussions and our Digo search for new materials this, this particular week, we're looking for articles around the myths that Miller discusses in, in Chapter 3. So I think that gives you just kind of a feel for how each module is laid out. And I hope that wasn't too much of a warp speed look. You've probably seen this in several of your classes, but I believe it's a good process. There's a flow to all online classes. And this one tends to run Monday to Sunday. In this particular class, by Thursday, you'll be starting some tweet conversations on Twitter. You'll do your discussion post by Friday. And that's typically the main thing that happens week to week. You know, discussions and tweets make up 25% of your grade. But there's also sometimes papers, and those tend to be due on Sunday. And between Thursday and Friday and Sunday, you'll be responding to classmates on both Twitter and discussion posts. So major assignments in this particular class, besides the weekly participation, in week three, you'll, you'll be exploring searching on the web and writing a short paper about what you learn. Then over a three-week process, you're going to be using Digo to collect web sources, and there's a grade for that. You'll actually use those resources to write an analysis of Web 2.0 and that's the analysis paper that shows up here. You will be making a short screencast in week six and updating a revamping a lesson in week seven. And then finally, uh, loading up your reflections and significant events into the ePortfolio in week eight. So that's the course in a nutshell. But one final point. I mentioned the weekly routine of tweeting by Thursday, posting by Friday, and following up your tweets and comments by Sunday. If you wait until late on Sunday to begin following up, you do not give your classmates time to respond back to you, and you don't give yourself time to respond back to their questions. I basically uh, have your original post as 50% of your grade, but the quality of your interactions on both Twitter and uh, the discussion forum make up the other 50% of your weekly grade. So I expect in both Twitter and in Canvas that you'll respond to questions I or your classmates pose and that you'll respond back when people comment or tweet to you. This is not a course in which you're one-on-one -on -one with me. We're all in this together and I expect to learn from you as I hope you'll learn from me. So that pretty well gives you a rundown of the course. I'm looking forward to it. I always have fun in this course. And I'm looking forward to getting to know each of you better. So see you on the web.